Now let's go and take a look at some roles. So first of all, I'm going to log into my database. I'm going to log in a system in Oracle Enterprise Manager. I'm going to go to Security, and I'm going to go and look at roles. So let's click here. Roles that are interesting. As you know, Connect and Resource are generally deprecated. We'll have a look at that in a moment. DBA is the database administrator role. Export and import full database allow you to use the export and import utilities to do full imports and exports on the database. Generally, export is sometimes used as a full export as a backup. That's database administration now. Another interesting role is the select catalog role. This allows you to look at all the metadata dictionary and performance view Oracle views. Let's go and take a look at Connect. The Connect role will have certain system privileges, namely alter session plus a number of system privilege create roles, create clusters, database link, general database objects, table view, etc. Let's have a look at the resource role, generally used for development. It has more or less the same sort of thing as connect, other than the fact that it has the option to create other database object types, such as procedures, operators, index types, etc. What I'd like to do now is to go through an example process. In grouping privileges using roles, I'm going to show you how to create a role, how to grant system privileges to that role, and then how to grant that role to a user, namely the developer user. We're also going to learn some tips and tricks using SQL Plus to find out how to process large numbers of records using output spool files and concatenated strings within select statements. We're going to go through a sequence of steps. Let's go through those steps first just to see what we're going to do. First thing we're going to do is going to create a role called develop, a new role. Then we're going to find all the system privileges that we've already granted to developer. We're going to put it into a spool file. Then we're going to take all the system privileges in that spool file and grant them to the role develop. Then we're going to remove all those system privileges from developer by using the revoke command. Then we're going to grant the role develop with all its system privileges contained within it to the developer user. And then we're going to show that the developer user has no direct system privileges, but that it has the privileges that it had before except that it now has them through the role rather than directly. So we're going to test it. Let's connect to the database as the system user. Now let's go and create a role called develop. Role created. Now we need to go and look at the system privileges granted to the user developer. So we're going to have to connect well, we don't have to connect the developer, but it's easy to do it this way. First thing I want to do is to set the headings off. I can do this by setting pages zero. Now what I want to do is to output the system privileges granted to the developer user to a file. So I'm going to say spool and drive C in a temporary directory now I'll call it sysprivs.log. And I'll paste in a command I typed in earlier. What this does is it says select from user cribs the column privilege. And I'm concatenating in these pieces of text. So I'm actually going to have select, and it's going to come out and say grant privilege whatever it is to develop. So let's run this. Now let's say pull off to close the text file. Now we'll go and have a look at the text file. This is the text file we created with the spool command. What I'm going to do is I'm going to get rid of 
the extra lines. We can automatically not produce these extra lines from SQL Plus, but that's a little complex for now. So we'll just remove them manually. Now I'm going to save this file. I'm going to go back to SQL Plus. I'm going to log into system because I cannot grant those system privileges to the develop role unless I'm logged in the system. I certainly can't do it from the developer user unless I was to give the granting privilege to the developer user, which I don't want to at this stage. What I'm going to do is I'm going to run this script now. And this grants all the system privileges to the role. Now what I want to do is I want to revoke all the system privileges from the developer user. Now I could go into SQL Plus and I could type another fancy select statement and produce a set of commands that say revoke system privileges from developer. What I'm going to do is I'm just going to go to the text file which I used last time and I'm just going to replace everything. Seems a little easier at this stage. And what I can do is I've replaced grant with revoke. I'm going to place, replace space to develop semicolon with space from developer. This is pretty simple. I'm just telling you what I'm doing so it makes sense. And now I've got a whole lot of revoke things from something. So I'm going to save this file. I'm going to go back to SQL Plus, logged in as system, and I'm going to run this script again, but with different commands in it. So what I did was I granted all the system privileges to the role. Now I'm going to revoke them all from the user. And there we have revoke succeeded.